Good morning, Peace Baptist. These are your announcements for the week of Sunday, November 21st, 2021. Push Ministry is inviting Peace Baptist members to wear comfortable shoes on the fourth Sunday, November 28th, and join them after morning worship to fellowship and pass out meals to our neighbors in the Avondale community. Our hope is to see you there. Attention Women of Peace Baptist, the social media team has created a Facebook group just for you. You're able to share devotionals, encourage one another, and pray for one another. Visit Peace Baptist Avondale on Facebook and scroll down until you see groups. Also, those in the group can send out invites to join the group. Compassion Justice is partnering with South Avondale Elementary this school year to offer an after-school learning experience. We are providing learning buddies and tutors to assist children with reading, spelling, and various projects. This will be at South Avondale Elementary, and for more information, if you're interested, you can contact Peggy Peckham at P Peckham, P P E C K H A M at cj.church. Just a reminder, we are still having our weekly prayer call next week, Wednesday, November 24th at 6 p.m. If you would like to join, please follow the dial in procedures on the website. Be praying for the Peace Baptist family, for all those bereaved, for Michelle Mooney and family, Joyce Cargill family, and Sue Davis and family, for Mary Cohen, for Doris Scott, for Dot Wingfield, for Sherry, for Emma Johnson, for Maggie Harmon, for Mae Tavis, for Lena Barnes, for Patricia Barnes, John Roberts, John Miller, and Nina South's uncle who's battling cancer. Be praying for our community, our new pastor, for the Peace Baptist leadership, the congregation, the school, the administrators, the teachers, and Avondale and the city of Cincinnati. And finally, a happy birthday goes out to everyone who has a birthday in the month of November. If I had a sermonic theme for you today, it would be, I survived it. I survived it. Can we just have a moment of prayer? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. For God, I have been given a duty, Father God, to stand behind what is known as a sacred desk, Father God. But God, I ask that the people don't see me, Father God. Hide me behind your cross so they may know that there has been a risen Savior, Father God. Father God, if there's anything that is unlike you in me, Father God, I ask that you remove it right now, Father God. Father God, I ask that you hold me up and strengthen me, Father God, where I'm weak, Father God. Father God, I ask you to have the people to see that there are a bunch of survivors in this building today. Father God, I pray right now, Father God, that the word that goes out, Father God, it will transform hearts, Father God. Give hope, Father God. Make people look towards the future, Father God, and see, Father God, that you have come to save, Father God and not to condemn. So it is you and you in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. There was a man named Frank, uh, Victor Frankel. He was an Austrian neurologist, psychologist, psychiatrist, and a philosopher. He actually was a Holocaust survivor. Uh, he developed a psychology, uh, a psychotherapy that was known as logotherapy. Uh, they wanted to find out what it was about people that, that helped them survive uh, during the Holocaust since he was a death camp survivor. Uh, so, so what he did was he took elements from people and he wanted to find out what helped them survive. He looked at them from a health standpoint. He looked at them from an intellectual standpoint. He looked at them from survival skills standpoint. He looked at them from every standpoint that he figured. He wanted to see, if, was it their family that helped them survive? But he quickly understood that everything that he looked at, he found out that there were no foundational reasons for them to still survive. He talked to the people, and one thing that they realized, the only reason why they survived is that they had a future hope that helped them survive. They knew that they had work to do. They had things that was left undone. So they wanted to press on and go through. The same thing was done with P POW soldiers in the Vietnam War. Uh, they, they went to these camps and they, they wanted to figure out why did they survive? How did they survive? 
So they asked the question, and, and everything came up. They realized that they, too, had a present hope. Uh, they had some future that they were looking for. They knew that they wanted to get back to family. They knew that there were work that still needed to be done. Isn't it amazing that we all stand here today? We sit here today, uh, even us online, that we come and we try to figure out uh, what is it about life? What are we going through? The trials and the tribulations, everything that we're going through. Sometimes some of us sitting here, we have more month than money. Uh, kids are getting on our nerves, uh, having problems in school. Uh, daycare provider ain't acting right. We have all types of issues, but yet we're still sitting here today figuring out that we still survive it. Some of us are going through other things. You may have church hurt. Uh, you may be going through marital issues. You may be going through mommy issues. You may be going through daddy issues. But you're still sitting here today saying that you survived it. Hmm. May I submit to you that uh, the only reason why you're able to sit here and, and survive what you've been through because you have figured out that uh, you had your hopes placed on a future site. Uh, and, and that hope that you had became that faith and what you figured out that your hope was built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Uh, upon the solid rock you stand where you everywhere else is sinking ground. I don't know about you today, but I realized that every challenge that I went through, everything that I've been through, I have survived only because I had a hope. The Bible tells us that in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We have hope today, folks. We are survivors. We are survivors in this building. Here we are. We're parked at the 23rd and the 24th verse in, in Genesis. And, and it amazes me because where we parked at, I kind of put you on the tail end where we really just see that everything died. But no one really understands until we travel back in the time and, and we have to look at what caused all this stuff to get us where we're at. We see here that we're going to deal with Noah today. Noah, the one who, who was charged to, to build a boat. Uh, he actually built an ark. The ark was about half as big as uh, Royal Caribbean's uh, uh, largest ark, being 450 feet long. The ark was a quarter inch, a quarter uh, height as the Royal Caribbean's largest boat, being 45 feet high. Uh, and it was also 75 feet wide. And uh, he was charged to put three different levels on this boat. And, 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 and the Bible tells us that Noah did all this stuff that he was commanded to do with no problem. But, but the issue is, is when, when we look at Noah's life, we understand that this world that Noah was living in, the world had become corrupt. The society had lost his mind. So God looked down at society and he's thinking that he's really upset at what he's done. What he's created, he's, I can't believe this. This is horrible. These people don't know me. They can't know me doing this. They have turned completely away from God. But we see the first time in the Bible that, that is mentioned that there's a righteous person. And the first time we see that in the Bible, it is Noah. He's called to be righteous. And, and we look at this and we, we, we see how Noah is and, and how Noah is righteous. Noah does his due diligence to do everything the Lord tells him to do. Uh, uh, we all look at ourselves and, and we look at ourselves as doing everything that God tells us to do. Uh, we, we come to church, uh, we go to Bible study, uh, we go out and profess in the, the name of Christ. Uh, but one thing that we may be missing uh, from a surface level, it says Noah had fellowship with God. Where is your fellowship with God today? Noah had fellowship with God. That means he spent time walking with God. Tell you today that Noah was 
was not one that that didn't have any flaws. Uh, Because being righteous is just being in right standing with the Lord. Uh, Everything that went on around Noah, he didn't partake in. You have to understand that things that's going on around you, you don't have to partake in. You can just keep doing what you're supposed to do. Question of the day. What does your faith unlock for you to make you become a survivor? What does your faith unlock for you to make you become a survivor? Hmm. We see here uh, our first point. You were chosen by God. Your faith unlocks you to be chosen by God. We see that in verse number one. It says, when everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, go into the boat with all your family. For among all the people on earth, I I can see that you alone are righteous. So the Lord tells Noah to go into the boat with with him and his family. Uh, Noah had had three sons, uh, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. Uh, They all had a wife. Uh, And and when you look at this, because Noah had a wife, everybody else in the community were taking women as they want to. They were taking all types of women. So they were dealing basically in polygamy. But as you can see, Noah is righteous because in the state that he's in, in the generation that he's in, he has chosen just to have one wife. We probably don't see that from a surface level because we understand that society around us dictates what the world is supposed to be. But we serve a higher God that holds us to a higher standard. I don't know about you today, but uh, uh, some things we realize about Noah that that really draws me back because Noah was righteous, but Noah came from a lineage of righteousness. See, see, I, I take it that uh, Noah was even chosen before uh, this point. Uh, because if you go back, you would see Noah's father, Lamech. He, he, he wanted Noah to be born. When Noah was born, he said that Noah would be the one that would take away all the pain from the grounds that they are, are, are toiling from the curse of God. So his father had spoken out to the Lord. And, and, and if you realize who, who, who Noah and Lamech was, and, and, and Lamech was uh, born to Methuselah, you know old is Methuselah, everybody knows that. And, and, and you realize that if you go back generation to generation, you'll find one that, that walked with the Lord, which was Enoch, that was Noah's great-great-grandfather. So you would see that there was a bunch of righteousness in this generation. Uh, matter of fact, Noah, uh, he comes from the line of what Seth, uh, you know Adam and Eve, they had two sons, uh, Cain and Abel, Cain killed Abel, but but Seth was the one that, that came and uh, granted his, his mother another son. She said, this will be the son that the Lord gave me to give me back because of Abel is gone. So we understand that they were chosen. And it comes from generation to generation. And I know a bunch of you out there, and you're, you're probably trying to look and figure out where do you fit in in this generation? Where, when were you chosen? But the Bible tells you before the foundations of the world, he chose you. You're probably trying to go back and find somebody in your lineage. But I got one for you. Uh, there was a man uh, who, who didn't think he could have a child. And, and, and God took him and told him to look up at the sky. And, and as, not, as many as the number of the stars, that would be your descendants. I just want to tell you, if you are a child of Jesus Christ, you are a descendant of Abraham. Uh, you are a seed. Uh, I want to let you know that you have a father up in heaven that has claimed you as righteous. I don't know about y'all today, but this here is is very intriguing because when we look at all of this, we look at being chosen, it it really gets to me because uh, uh, being chosen is is something that's special. Uh, There's probably uh, 
it, it's being being loved and being chosen. But but the thing is, when you're being chosen, there has to come a point where you have to accept the call. There has to be a point where you accept the call. Just being chosen, that's great. I mean, it's marvelous, but if you don't answer the call, it don't make any sense. Uh, there's a lot of us here that, that, that has a, a three-way on the telephone call waiting, but if, if someone is beeping in and you don't answer the call, you are going to miss the call. Uh, I, I'm here to tell you here that there's someone on the other line with a higher authority that you need to click over and answer the call. You are chosen. You have to realize who you are in this world. You are a chosen child. Huh, let, let me see if I can help you out. There was a boy, there was a boy who, uh, who, who hated going to gym class. He really didn't like going to gym class. Uh, because when he go to gym class, they played all these team sports. Uh, and when they played team sports, they played sports like baseball. He did not like baseball. It was like he was non-athletic. He had two left feet. He didn't know what to do when it came to baseball. So what they would do, uh, everybody would pick. You know how you do on the basketball courts and everything. You pick players. Uh, he was always the last one picked. He, didn't, he really didn't understand. He, I really don't want to play. Can I sit on a while? No, you got to come in the game. The teacher says everybody has to play. Just in life, we all have to play. So uh, what, what I'm saying is here, uh, the boy, they would put him all the way out in right field. Uh, anybody that know anything about baseball, especially in Little League baseball, uh, players don't tend to hit the ball to right field. Uh, all players tend to pull the ball to left field. So he felt useless out there. Nothing coming his way. He didn't have nothing going on. He felt like he wasn't anything. But I come to tell you here, it doesn't matter what position you play. When you're in Christ, you have a position. It doesn't matter when you are chosen because when you're in Christ, we were all chosen at the same time, and that was before the foundations of the world. It, it, when you're in Christ, you got to understand that it doesn't matter where you live, where you came from, how old you are, how young you are, you were chosen. I don't know about you all today, but uh, I understand that where you grow up at, where you grow up at can, can really be a strain on who you are. But you have to start shaking that stuff off and realize that you were chosen by God before the foundations of the world. And there are some things that he had for you to do. You have to look forward in faith. Uh, everybody know what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. I dare you to grab into that bag of the invisible and pull out the impossible. God wants to use you. You are chosen, except the call. The next thing we have that will uh, unlock your faith, that faith unlocks, is you receive grace from God. You receive grace from God. And we look at that in verse 7, verse 7 and 8. He went on board the boat to escape the flood. He and his wife and his sons and his and their wives. With them were all the various kinds of animals, those approved for eating and for sacrifice and those that were not, along with all the birds and the small animals that scurry along the ground. You receive grace from God. I know you all looking like, uh, I'm receiving grace from God. You show sure enough are. Uh, and and, and the, the, the magnificent thing of this is uh, Noah received the grace from God, correct? But there was a few people that was a byproduct of the grace that Noah received. Uh, uh, let, let me help you out a little bit more. Uh, I, I remember two thieves uh, up on the cross in between Jesus and, and the one thief uh, told the other one, fool, shut up. And he believed in the Lord and he said, today you will be with me in paradise. Grace from God. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but uh, I, 
I don't mind being a beneficiary at times. Uh, I, I, I don't mind receiving things that I, I don't really deserve. Uh, I, I, I don't mind uh, uh, doing things that, that, that God wants me to do because I understand that in my obedience, uh, it's better than sacrifice and I will receive grace from God. It was because of Noah and his obedience that he received grace. Uh, uh, and, and I love this because God made provisions for the ones that received grace. Uh, uh, he made provisions because Noah didn't have to go out and hunt down these animals, no. He didn't have to do none of that stuff. Well, the thing was that God said the animals will come to you. Uh, and, and, and it, it, it wows my mind because uh, even the animals got food because God said bring seven pair of each just for eating. Because you had to feed everybody on the boat and the animals. And, and it's amazing how, how, how God set provisions up for us to receive his grace. Uh, we know we should have been dead sleeping in our grave, but, but God made death behave. Uh, you, we know that we understand that, that there is a God that sits high and looks low, and anything we go through, he's there. We all receive grace. We all receive grace. And one thing I realized that when you receive grace, uh, the receivers of the grace uh, should walk righteously. Uh, they should walk righteously uh, and, and be separate from sin. Hmm. You say, how do I walk righteously and be separate from sin? Uh, I, I recall the verse in the Bible, it says, uh, be ye holy for I am holy. Uh, there's a way that when you have that Holy Spirit imparted in you, you begin to walk and listen to that Spirit and talk with God. When you're in constant fellowship with God, Rome will disappear. I don't know about y'all today, but uh, I, I understand that a, re a relationship just ain't good enough. We all know that we're sons and daughters. But it's something else when you got your daddy that can put his arm around you and take you out and walk with you and talk with you. It's something else when you have a bond with something. Just having a relationship don't mean you have a bond. We see this. And we understand that the catastrophes of life they can't even interrupt God's plan. Huh. We see here in this, in this text, uh, Noah had to, to build a boat. Uh, he had to build this ark. Uh, it, it, it says when, when Noah was 500 years old, uh, he had three sons by then. And uh, uh, it, it doesn't say that the floodwaters came until after he was 600 years old. Uh, Noah had to endure some things. He had to put in some work before he got to the point where God wanted him to be. Why do we want everything right now? Why do we want everything right here and now when God is saying, I need you to put in some work? You don't even know me, but yet you want everything. God's saying, come, sup with me. Come, roll up your sleeves, put in some work. Get to know me. Because he tells us, uh, I know the plans that I had for you, saith the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to destroy you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. We're all sitting here today and we're looking at that text, Jeremiah 29 and 11, and we, we, we think we understand. But what I want you to know today that he has already given us a hope. He's already given us a future. All we have to do is look forward to it. Let's not get caught in the past. All those glory days. We all like to talk about the glory days. But I tell you what, if, if Noah wanted to talk about the glory days, he would have missed the boat. Because it was seven days prior and he said, get on in this boat, it's time to get in. So if he was sitting down talking about the glory days, he might have got caught up, wrapped up, tied up. And something he had no business to. 
His glory days was the fellowship with the Lord. And that's what made him be obedient as he was. And we understand here that, that we have uh, been chosen by God. We see that uh, we receive grace from God. And, and, and now we go and uh, we see that you are sealed by God. And I tell you, that comes in verse number 16. And, 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 and when I read this, it, it, it really got to my mind because my mind got to going with me because most of the time we look at things on a surface level, but uh, we need to get a little bit deeper. It tells us. A male and a female of each kind entered. Just as God had commanded Noah, the Lord closed the door behind them. The Lord closed the door behind them. <laughs> and, and, and I got to thinking, uh, in those days, uh, he had them put a door on the side. The rain, it was torrential rain that was going to come down. And the ground was going to erupt and, and, and water is going to come up from the ground. And, and, and I got to thinking because they did a gap going around the boat. So, so I'm thinking that that door doesn't have weather, weather seal on it. That door doesn't have the proof on it to keep the water from coming out. And, and, and I, got to, I got to wondering, and I, I, I really got to thinking about this because, I, you know me, I'm, I'm one of those type of people that really put thought into things because when I close a window, I want to make sure no air, no water, nothing is going to get in. But, but when you're dealing with God, you don't even need all of that. When he says he's sealing something, he's sealed. Uh, so, so he's saying that he shut the door behind them. Uh, uh, and, and, and it says that it, it rained actually for 150 days. But we know it rained constantly for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, I just stopped by here to tell somebody that you were out of that storm that went for 40 days and 40 nights. You're going to have some rain from here and there. But God is saying you are sealed. Hmm. You are sealed. Uh, when, when we look, uh, look at uh, Ephesians uh, 1 and 13, uh, it says, uh, uh, when uh, we are included with Christ, we, are, uh, we have heard the message of truth, the gospel of salvation. Uh, uh, we, when you believed, uh, you were marked with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit. <laughs> you were marked with the seal. Now, now, I can tell you that uh, seals are uh, a lot different. Uh, I don't know what type of seal you're talking about, but a, a, a seal that you put on a letter lets them know that the product inside of that envelope came from the person who sealed it. Uh, a, a, a seal uh, in the ancient days would be uh, the, the cow getting the, the, the shock and, and, and putting the brand on the cow, letting them know whose property it was. A seal even in slavery days uh, would be a, a, some type of mark on the person to let them know not to take their property. I come by here to tell you today that, that the seal that we had uh, was the seal of Jesus Christ. Uh, he closed that door. He said, you will not see destruction. You will not hurt. You will not mourn. I got your back. Matter of fact, he promised us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will cometh in the morning. Is there anybody here that knows that they're sealed by the grace of God? We look at this, we look at this really, really. We, we look at this tough. And uh, we understand that everything that we go through, uh, we're not just the only beneficiary of, of what we go through. Uh, uh, we understand that everything we go through uh, is, is, is a potential testimony for the person next to you, the person you'll talk to later. Uh, everything you go through is not just for you. 
And, and, and I love the way that uh, our Lord thinks because uh, he told him uh, to get in the boat and take his family along and they were going to really repopulate the earth. Uh, he, he used them uh, to, to show the world uh, who they're supposed to be, who he is. Uh, uh, we, we understand that when we hold fast to, to God's unchanging hand, because uh, God never changes. Uh, your ideas may change, but God never changes. What God says he will do, what God want to do, he would do. I just came to tell y'all that y'all are sealed right now. You don't have to worry about going the way of the world. The world can't hurt you. The world cannot harm you. You cannot be destroyed by the world because we have a God that's of a higher power. I just don't know. Uh, really today, when you look at being sealed, can, can, can I tell you a story about me right here? I went to the doctor two weeks ago. And, and the doctor came into the room and uh, the, the doctor say, uh, how you feeling? You know me, I'm feeling great. Uh, your Crohn's, how you doing with your Crohn's? I'm doing great. Oh, how's life going? Life is going good. Everything's moving fast. The doctor has his tablet. He sits down. He says, why isn't your kidney function telling me that? I looked down and uh, I was in dismay. I was really in dismay at that point. And, and I looked down and and he's saying, he's going over things. He says, your, your vitamin D looks good and, and this level looks good, but I don't understand why your kidney function is showing me what it's showing me. Keep in mind, I'm the same guy that uh, found out that I was in stage three uh, kidney failure. Uh, uh, they said it was all the way back in 2010, but I didn't see a doctor until about three years ago, and they told me. Uh, I, I'm that same guy that, that, that went through all this stuff, but it was something about being sealed by God. So, so, so I'm sitting in the office, and uh, the only thing I could think about when he's going over this stuff, I say, uh, well, well, where's my creatinine level? And he just put up his fingers. He didn't even tell me. He just put the fingers up. And he says, I don't understand why this level is this high. And, and, and I know, and I, I, I'm sitting there, I'm a little disappointed, but all I could think about was I needed a moment of now unto him who is able uh, to do exceedingly abundantly of which I can ask or think. Uh, I needed a now unto him moment. I, I, I know that uh, uh, when we're sealed, uh, uh, there's a lot of us in here that can tell you about a now unto him moment. Uh, I, I know Sister Winkfield can tell you she had a now unto him moment. Uh, I know Angie Brown can tell you I had a now unto him moment. I know Mams is at home. How you doing, Mams? I know you can tell me that that's a now unto him moment. And the only reason why we can have a now unto him moment is because we're looking towards the future. Don't you get caught in the past. That doctor's report was in the past. But I want you to have a now unto him moment. Because he's able to do exceeding abundantly of what we can even ask or think. He's able to do it according to what worketh in us. He's able to do it. I don't know about y'all today, but I just need two or three people that realize that I have a now unto him moment. I, I, I just need a couple people to just give God an undignified praise and realize that I have a now unto him moment. Uh, it don't matter what the doctors say, but I have a now unto him moment. I realize that I've been sealed by the blood of Jesus and I have a now unto him moment.
I don't know about you today. There's someone that may not even know what we're talking about. But we serve a God who sits high and he looks low. We serve a God who will rock us in the cradle of his arms. We serve a God who's a comforter. He even sent us the Holy Spirit. We serve a God who's a healer. I hear somebody say, Jehovah Jireh. He's your provider. He takes care of you, Jehovah Nisi. Someone's crying out victory right now. All you need to know is you have a now unto him moment. And the only thing you know after that is I survived it. A lot of you may be thinking, you got your mind, as, I survived it. You, you, you try to manufacture some survival. You're listening to Destiny's Child, I survived it. I'm not going to give up. But you realize that that wasn't strong enough. You try to manufacture a survival technique, a survival skill. But now you realize that you needed something stronger. That's why you realize that it was upon the rock, upon the solid rock of Christ that I stand. All other grounds were sinking sand. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I see right now that I have a moment to celebrate who God is. Because I don't know how long I have this moment. But even if I'm not here in the next moment, I know what I did in the moment. Uh, I, I, I understand that I'm looking forward in Christ. Uh, I may live 10, 20, 30 years from now, uh, but I want to know what did I do in those 10 or 20, 30 years uh, to go towards Christ. Uh, you may be one in here that is waiting to go to Christ, but I come to tell you the wait is over today uh, because I'm compelling you uh, to walk towards Christ. Uh, and, and if you walk towards Christ, he won't let you down. Uh, uh, he'll stick stronger to you than a brother. Uh, uh, he's closer than a friend. Uh, he's the one that'll be there to the bitter end. Uh, I know him for myself. Uh, I don't need nobody else uh, because Jesus is the one uh, who saved this wretched soul. Uh, all I need to know is uh, won't you take his hand and have a now unto him moment and take a stand. Uh, God is with you. Uh, who can be against you? Uh, God is almighty. Uh, God is magnificent. Uh, God is omnipotent. Uh, God is your savior. Uh, God is your redeemer. Uh, won't you answer the call? Thank you, Mike, Minister Mike, for sharing that with us. We all have that now unto him moment. There's someone out there who has not had that now unto him moment. There's someone out there who says that, yes, I know I have survived this. I know I have survived that. But they were surviving on their own strength. We know the only way we can survive is through Jesus Christ. There might be someone out there who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You need that now unto him moment today. You cannot walk out of here today not knowing who Jesus Christ is. Mike, Mike um, uh, he, that now unto him moment is out of Ephesians 3, chapter, uh, it's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It talks about how we have that now unto him moment, and, ex and Jesus Christ exceeds all that. And we have to realize that you cannot walk out of here, leaving out of here, not knowing 
who Jesus is. You cannot leave out of here not being chosen by God because he already chose. He wants each and every one of us to be part of his family. So you're already chosen, but you need to accept that call. And it's by his grace. He has given all of us all the grace that we can ever, ever need. And you need to be sealed, sealed by God. So there's leaders that can stand up front. If there's someone out there who really is just struggling, really struggling in their own work, in their own, in their own strength, and need that Savior, need that Redeemer, need Jesus Christ to be part of them, these people can help walk you through and give you and share with you that relationship that you need to have with Jesus Christ is there one you know a lot of us have been through a lot of struggles been through a lot of trials and tribulations we know that we should consider it all joy because as we go through these trials and tribulations it's going to increase that perseverance that you have and it's going to give you that character that character that we all know that God has put inside of us and you might have survived and you might or you're you're still surviving but you might need someone just to pray for you to continue to give you that strength because we all need that strength but we all know that we can do all things in Christ who has given us that strength but you just need this prayer to continue to persevere where you are and what you're going through. Is there one? All of us have those struggles. I know I can list, I can list 10 that I'm going through right now. But I know with his, his just, his love for me, he allows me to get through it day by day hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second. God is real. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Father, I'm coming to you just with a bowed head and an open heart just to, just to uh, share with you that we still need you, Father. Each and every one of us need that now unto you moment, Father that we know that you are sovereign, you are omnipotent, you are omnis omniscient, you are omnipresent, you know everything that we're going through and you know, and you have all the power to take all of our ailments and everything that we're going through away. But even if you do not take it away, you know that the things that are still inside of us that are causing us to struggle, it's something that's going to get us to be closer to you, and that's what we need most. We need that moment that we can have that fellowship with you, Father. And that moment was given to us before the foundations of the earth, that you said that we are your children, and we have accepted the call to be your children. Now, we just have to have that faith of the mustard seed, that no matter what we're going through, Father, we know that you are our Father and you're going to take us through. Father, I know that some of us just feel that we do not have the strength to persevere, but we have seen all the miracles that you have provided for us each and every day by just even allowing us to wake up in the morning, Father, that we should count every blessing that you have given us, whether big or small, that we know that there's nothing that's impossible for you, Father, that we're not going to put all of our faith in man. We're not going to put all of our faith in medicine. We're not going to put all our faith in people. We're going to put our faith in you because we know that you can do all things. We love you, God, and we know that you love us because you gave us your only son. You loved us when we were sinners, Father, and we thank you for that. You've given us the ultimate sacrifice, the perfect gift, and we just thank you for that. We thank you for just allowing us just to see your hand, your hand of glory, Father. We thank you for just allowing us just to smell the sweet aroma 
of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for just everything that you have already done, that you're doing, and that you're going to do for us, Father. Because we know that your love is just the greatest love that, that, that we can ever experience. And we thank you for that. We thank you for not only this congregation, but everyone in the world, Father, who just has that yearning just to know who you are, Father. And we pray that our footsteps and our light can, can lead people to you, can lead people to your son, Jesus Christ. We know that we're on mission. Give us the strength to continue to be on mission. No matter what condition that we're in, no matter what capacity we have, we know that we are to work to share the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ, to others, our neighbors, and the world. And forever give him, Jesus Christ, our honor, our glory, and our praise. Amen. Amen. There's only one announcement that I have, and I know um, this person um, really doesn't need uh, any accolades, but I tell you, this person has gone through a lot for the past this few years, just with all the work and the diligence, the perseverance. And they last month they have achieved a goal that they've been working for for a long time. And we have amongst us one of our ministers. She is now a doctor. Dr. Kim Johnson, let's stand up and give her a hand clap and praise. And I know Kim would say it had nothing to do with her, it was all God, but she has, has just worked diligently, you know, uh, serving this congregation you know, and everything that she has done, and also just personally with this, with her job, and now she's a doctor. I know she said that we can continue to call her Kim. You know, I told everyone you can continue to call me Tom, but every time I get a text message from Kim, and every time that she talks to me, she says, Pastor Tom, Pastor Tom. So Kim, I'm gonna continue to call you doctor. I'm gonna call you Doc, Doc K. That's what I'm gonna start calling you. So we want to thank, thank you uh, just for your diligence and not, um, not wavering in, in, in everything that you have gone through. And also, I, I do want to announce that um, she has accepted to be our new um, person or overseer of all of our ministries. So she is going to be the ministry leader. So I have officially taken everything off my plate so I can continue just to preach and teach. So, so she's going to start um, that um, responsibility in uh, January. So if you have any um, questions or uh, if you want to, um, any, anything that deals with ministries, uh, Dr. K will be in charge of that. At this time, um, anyone, do we have any first time visitors, first time visitors? Are there any first-time visitors of Peace Baptist? I guess we're all family. We're all family. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, if, uh, at this time, also, anyone um, who wants to give, we have our basket up front. Also, you can give via our, our website, www.peacebaptist.org, or our church app. And also, lastly, don't forget, today we are going to review the Constitution uh, hopefully, prayerfully, that you have looked at the Constitution that was emailed to you. Um, I don't know if we have any copies back there, Devana. I don't think we do. But you can go into your, your email. If you need it emailed to you, we can email it to you again. But uh, we are just going to go over. If you have any questions, please um, stay after this service. And myself and the elders will be able to um, answer any questions that we have about the Constitution now. We are going to try to vote on it. Um, I think December 5th is what we have established that we're going to vote on any amendments to the Constitution. So at this time, uh, we'll uh, stand for the benediction. Then right after that, we'll 
probably wait around five minutes and then we'll get started with any questions about the Constitution. I think we have it on Zoom also, Matt, right? It's gonna be on Zoom? You don't know? Well, we'll, we'll figure that out in five minutes after uh, this benediction. So think about that. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you for this opportunity for us today to just, just hear from a, a, a mighty word that was given from Minister Mike Thomas. Yes, I have survived. I pray that each and every person a sound of my voice, whether they're here or, or virtually, that they that, that resonates in their in their life throughout this week, that yes, they have survived. That Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is inside of, inside of them. So yes, they have survived. No matter what trial they're going through, they have survived. No matter what they're dealing with this week, they have survived. Allow them to realize that that yes, they were chosen by God. Yes, they were um, uh, given grace by God. And yes, they're sealed by God. And don't let any trial, tribulation overcome them. See God's hand in everything that they, they are doing. I, I pray that each and every one of us at, um, that are here, if they happen to leave, that they arrive to their home safely. And, where, and, and, uh, and it is in the same condition that they left. And we'll forever give Jesus all of our glory, our honor, and our, our praise. Amen.